You're listening to the Divorce and Your Money Show, the number one divorce podcast in the United States. I'm your host, Sean Lehman, MBA and certified divorce financial analyst. Be sure to get a copy of my new book called, surprise, surprise, Divorce and Your Money, How to Avoid Costly Divorce Mistakes. You can get a copy on Amazon or by visiting divorceandyourmoney.com. While you're on the website, be sure to book a strategy session with me. We have 30-minute strategy sessions, and you have two options. One in which you can just speak directly about issues that apply to you, regardless of whether you're at the beginning of the divorce, thinking about what you want to do in the middle, trying to figure out the right path to take, or at the end of your divorce and you're trying to figure out the best options for you. And also there, we have a document review appointment where we can review your financial affidavit, your divorce settlement, or other documents related to your divorce, and also include a strategy session on top of that to make sure that whatever you're preparing or about to sign is in your best interest. With that, on to this week's episode. One of the challenges of picking a divorce attorney is finding the right type of attorney or type of personality of an attorney to work with you and for you during the divorce process. There can be a lot of different styles of attorney. Sometimes you want an attorney that is more there working towards a resolution and won't run up your bill, but you also want an attorney who is going to advocate for you and fight for you. One of the things I want to cover in this particular episode is why you want to avoid hiring the most aggressive divorce attorney. You'll see a lot of attorneys out there who claim to be the dog, the bulldog, the fighter. They're going to go all in and advocate and fight for you on every issue and make sure that you're there to win. In fact, if you think about the way that Divorce attorneys are represented in movies. Oftentimes, the attorney is going to be that pit bull, aggressive, sports car driving, fancy suit, 35th floor in downtown office attorney that is there to be aggressive and fight. But I want to give some considerations when it comes to choosing an attorney as to why that might not be the ideal in terms of picking the most aggressive person. And there are four big topics I want to cover in terms of an aggressive attorney. The first is that going to court is expensive. Second is aggressive does not equal respect in the legal community. Third is aggressive doesn't mean effective. And finally, fourth is that an aggressive attorney can be emotionally draining. So I'm going to go through these four points. And and just keep in mind, when you're thinking about your attorney selection, you're thinking about the divorce process, you're thinking about how this processes go is ultimately you're going to need to get to a resolution. Most people listening want to get to some form of a settlement and it requires some negotiating ability, not everything being lopsided. It doesn't mean you cave in and give in to the other side, but you want someone who is there to advocate for you, but help you get to a resolution, not just fight for fighting sake. And so the first point in this is is going to court is expensive. If you get an aggressive attorney, you will constantly be fighting absolutely every issue. There will be a motion for every issue. You'll have lots and lots of legal work that's done. And anything that your spouse, soon to be ex-spouse brings up, whether it's valid or not, is going to be challenged, even when it's not justified to be challenged. And sometimes it is going to ultimately hurt you, not harm you. And so when you have overly aggressive attorneys, oftentimes you don't get to a point where there's a resolution and you end up going to trial or having many, many court dates. And the process takes twice as long and is five times more expensive because you're fighting every issue. The second point is aggressive attorneys aren't always respected, both by judges and the legal community. Remember, when I use the word aggressive, I do mean the person who fights for fighting's sake. If you know that someone's always going to fight every particular issue, whether it's big or tiny and irrelevant in the overall process of things, that person starts to lose their credibility. I mean, imagine, and I use an example that's actually a true example, but let's just say you have 
$300 worth of dishes at home. You know, you have your plates and your bowls and your cups and whatever else. But seven motions later and 14 hours of legal work later, you have now spent $5,000 or more on trying to get those cups and plates going to your house and not your ex-spouse. And that's kind of the thing where you would have been better off just letting this issue be rather than fighting over every detail attached to it. And so when you're fighting over every little issue, there comes a point where people don't value what you say because everything is an emergency. Everything is a big deal. And then the issues that really are big deals get lost in the overall shuffle because you don't have that credibility when there are actual emergencies or are actual issues because everything is. The third point is that aggressive doesn't necessarily mean assertive or effective. Now, you want, and one of the most common things that almost everyone wants, and I hear all the time, is you want your attorney to fight for you. That is a fair point and a fair statement. You want to feel like your attorney is on your side, advocating on your behalf, standing up for you through the legal system to make sure that what's going on in this divorce process is right and just. And if there's something incorrect that's going on, that that person is going to advocate and make sure that you walk out with a good settlement or the best that's possible given the circumstances. Now, that said, there are ways to do that without causing unnecessary fights on every issue. And the way I make that distinction is there's a difference between being aggressive and being assertive. And so there are some people who many attorneys I like, some of the ones that I recommend to people when appropriate, is they are very assertive. They're always in your corner and they will always advocate on your behalf, but they aren't overly aggressive on how they do it. They treat themselves as being right. So because they know the law well, they know how to negotiate skillfully, they don't have to yell or cause unnecessary burden. They can speak in a tone like this. They can write factual statements. They can use the law to their advantage in order to help you versus making every issue an explosion or a blow up. And then the last point is that an aggressive attorney is just emotionally draining. I've been on the receiving end of and also seen clients who are on the receiving end of overly aggressive attorneys. And what they say and what they receive and what they communicate is just, you know, it's just always just always something, whether you said something the right way or you incorrectly typed something or whatever the case may be that the receiving end that they're going to say, they make every issue a five alarm fire when it may just not even be smoke coming out of the kitchen. They pretend like the the whole house is burnt down and we got to rebuild it. And, And it just becomes overly complicated when it doesn't need to be. In a perfect world, and there isn't a perfect world in divorce oftentimes, this is divorce that we're talking about, but if there were a perfect world in divorce, you would have two reasonable people, two reasonable attorneys that say, hey, our sole objective is to get to a fair settlement so that everyone can move on with their lives at a reasonable cost and in a reasonable time frame. That's the goal. And when you have someone who's fighting every issue, either on your behalf or if unfortunately your spouse picks that aggressive attorney, everything just is a constant fight and it's a battle and it's draining and it, it isn't productive. And so you want to make sure that the attorney that you pick when you're looking for an attorney knows how to pick his or her battles on your behalf. So some things are worth fighting, other things are not. And a wise attorney will guide you in the right direction. And so in the overall big picture, one of my favorite phrases uh, that I've said on the podcast before is you can't see the forest for the trees, meaning you look at every individual tree that you can't realize that you're in this big forest and you don't necessarily know what the big picture looks like. Well, that's what it is like working with an overly aggressive attorney is you're fighting and looking at every individual tree, but sometimes you just miss the whole big picture as to why you're here, what your objectives are, and what's the best way to get out of this, all things considered. And picking an an overly aggressive attorney can really harm you in that regard. That's it for this episode. I'm going to continue the series on attorneys because it's one of the most important 
things that you can do as part of the divorce process. Now, before you go, I want to make sure you get some really important information. I'm going to tell you about a few things that may be of interest to you. First is a favor, is if you could leave a review. If you're on the iTunes store, leave a review on iTunes. Or if you search Divorce in Your Money on a website called Trust Pilot or on Google, you can leave a review there. It's quick. It's anonymous. It only takes a few seconds. And I really, really appreciate your feedback. I have uh, lots of reviews on iTunes and on Trust Pilot, and I appreciate hearing your stories. Also on divorceandyourmoney.com, you can get lots of great information. Of course, you can book a 30-minute strategy session directly with me. There's two types of strategy calls you can book, just a normal strategy session where we discuss the questions that are most pressing to you, regardless of where you are in the divorce process, be at the beginning, towards the end, or in the middle. Doesn't really matter. There's lots of great information we can cover during that strategy call. And also, we have a document review call. It's been one of the biggest things that we've done over the past year, which is you can send me your documents, be it your financial affidavit, a settlement agreement, or other documents that you would like for me to review. And then I review those in advance of the call. And then we get to discuss them in depth as part of a strategy session and get specific answers to some of the specific documents and things that you are considering. Also, for those who need ongoing support, we do have a few options for ongoing support. But regardless, it all starts with a coaching call that you can book at divorceandyourmoney.com. Don't forget to also get a copy of my new book. It's called Divorce and Your Money, How to Avoid Costly Divorce Mistakes. It's available on my website or also on Amazon. You just look me up and make sure you get the new edition. It is filled with excellent information regarding the divorce process. And I know that you will find it helpful. And once you've read the book, be sure to leave a review. That really helps me. I appreciate your feedback. And it also helps other people as they try and find this information. And finally, last but not least, by any means, is on the store at divorceinyourmoney.com. If you click on the store button, you can get access to the full archive of podcast episodes. There's over 200 episodes. And what's great about the store link is that the episodes are organized in neat buckets. And they're organized by topic. So it's very easy to follow along with the information And it is easy to pick out the key topics that matter most to you. And you can get all of those podcast episodes in the store. Thank you so much for listening. I'm your host, Sean Lehman, MBA and Certified Divorce Financial Analyst. Take care.